Consider the statically determinate truss structure. It consists of seven members and five joints. We want to calculate the member forces using the method of joints. Here are the steps for solving the problem. First, we calculate the support reactions. Next, we analyze each joint individually, formulating two equilibrium equations for each. We then solve the equations for the unknown forces at the joint. To determine the support reactions, we begin by sketching the complete free body diagram of the truss, which includes the forces exerted by the supports on the structure. For the purpose of writing the equilibrium equations, consider these directions as positive. Three equations must be formulated. The forces acting in the x direction, the forces acting in the y direction, and the moments around the z axis all have to sum up to zero. Here are the expanded forms of these three equilibrium equations. Two forces act along the x axis, leading to the formulation of this equation. In the y axis direction, four forces are present, comprising two applied loads and two support reactions, giving rise to this equation. When taking point A as the reference for the moment equation, we arrive at this expression. The 50 kN load has a moment arm of 10 meters. So the moment of the load about point A equals 10 times 50. This load has a moment arm of 4 meters. So we get 4 times 100. The moment arm for this load is 4 plus 3, plus 3, or 10 meters. So we get 10 times 100 here. These three terms are positive since the three applied loads produce a clockwise moment about point A. Conversely, the support reaction at point B, situated 14 meters to the right of point A, creates a counterclockwise moment. Therefore, we have a negative sign here. Solving these three equations for the unknown forces, we get. Let's revise the truss's free body diagram to include the magnitudes of the support reaction forces. We can now proceed to use the equilibrium equations on the joints of the truss. Joint A connects two truss members, AC and AD. Before formulating the equilibrium equations, it's essential to calculate the angles that each structural member forms with the horizontal axis. Given the known geometry of the truss, these angles are straightforward to find. Tangent of alpha is 10 over 4, which leads to an alpha value of 68.2 degrees. For beta, the tangent value is 7 over 7, resulting in a 45 degree angle. Here's the free body diagram corresponding to joint A. Two equilibrium equations can be formulated for this joint. Both the net forces in the x direction and the y direction have to equal zero. In the expanded form, these equations become. We can simplify the two equations. Then solve them for the two unknown forces. The sign associated with each force reveals if the member is experiencing tension or compression. A positive sign signifies that the member is under tension, while a negative sign indicates that the member is in compression. Therefore, member AC is undergoing tension, and member AD is subjected to compression. Joint B connects members BC and BE. The angles at which these members intersect the horizontal axis can be calculated in a manner similar to the previous step. Here is the free body diagram of the joint showing two member forces, FBC and FBE. The two equilibrium equations for the joint are. We can simplify these equations. Then solve them for the two unknown forces. So, member BC carries a tensile force of 128 kilonewtons, whereas, member BE has a compressive force of 244 kilonewtons. Joint D connects three members. The angle between member AD and the horizontal axis has already been established. 
Member CD forms a 45 degree angle with the horizontal axis. Three forces are involved in the equilibrium equations for this particular joint. Since we've already determined the force in member AD, only two unknown forces, FDC and FDE, remain in the equilibrium equations. Here are the equilibrium equations. And here they are in simplified form. Solving these equations for the unknown forces, we get. Therefore, member DC is subjected to a tensile force of 128 kN, whereas, member DE experiences a compressive force of 217 kN. Thus far, we've calculated the forces for 6 out of the 7 truss members. The final force can be determined at joint E. Here is the free body diagram of the joint. Even though it's possible to formulate two equilibrium equations for the joint, only one equation is necessary to find the remaining unknown force, as both equations reduce to the same expression. Solving this equation for FCE, we get. To summarize the findings, we can annotate each member with its corresponding calculated force magnitude. Alternatively, we can use the letter C to indicate compression and the letter T to signify tension next to each member.